The Labour Party on Tuesday issued a warning to the Nigeria Labour Congress against hijacking the political platform, saying it lacked the power to sack the Julius Aburi National Working Committee. A statement signed by its National Publicity Secretary, Obiora Ifu, the party described the stakeholders' meeting as an illegal assembly of a handful of aggrieved former members of the party, and some social media tigers were not its cat-carrying members. Labour Party's National Secretary also claimed that the political commission arm of the Nigeria Labour Congress was the brainchild of President of the Congress, Joe Ajero, which he had empowered to advance his political aspirations in 2027. Well, Kenneth Okonkwa, who is a lawyer and principal member of Nigeria's Labour Party, joins us now to discuss the latest instalment of this crisis and the legality or otherwise of NLC's attempt to take over the administrative structure of the party. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much for inviting me and thank you viewers at home for joining us. Well, I'd like you, I'd like you, you know, to give us your thoughts on why you think this crisis within the Labour Party you know, is persisting and, of course, the decision by the NLC to take over the party. How legal is it? Well, first of all, I have to start by making it clear that the framers of our constitution envisaged internal democracy within all political parties and that is the only way that people can govern political parties. And I'm talking about section 223, 1A, 2A of the Constitution, which said the Constitution and the rules of every political party must provide that the election of its principal members shall be periodically done within interval of four years. And any time any regime exceeds four years, it becomes unconstitutional. And to the extent of the stay after four years, it's null and void. And again, the method of electing members of the principal organs of a party has been specifically stated in the Constitution. In Section 228, the Constitution gave INEC power to make laws to ensure that political parties observe internal democracy. And the National Assembly has power to make law to ensure that. And they made the law in Electoral Act. Section 82, subsection 3 is very clear that the political party must allow all members of the party to vote for the candidates of their choice or duly elected delegates from them to vote for them. And so the idea that somebody will go to a backyard and purportedly say he has organized a national convention without delegates from the world, from the local government, from the states to the national convention is illegal. And that is irrespective of whatever the constitution of the party says because the constitution of Nigeria is supreme and the act of the National Assembly is superior to the constitution of the parties. So as I'm talking to you now, Abure and his members are no longer the executive of Labour Party by the constitution. They have exceeded four years and again, since they are not members of the executive of the principal organ of the party. They don't have any right to organize any convention. They have ceased to be members. So what you had was the members now organized a stakeholders meeting because there is a lacuna, there is a vacuum in the leadership of the Labour Party to chart the way forward. And they should because nature does not exist in a vacuum. So having a stakeholders meeting, and of course NLC is a stakeholder in Labour Party, no doubt about that. There's nothing wrong with that. So I think with time, they will fashion out the best legal way to go about it. But for now, the Abure executive has nothing to do with laying claim on the leadership of Labour Party. And even the Labour Party constitution is very clear that delegates from the state must be part of the national convention. So if you are electing anybody, 
and you sit down in a cocoon. I'll tell you where they are missing the point. And I'm talking about the Abure people. They are trying to say that the tenure of the world and the local government is different from the tenure of the national executive. And then there is no need for what Congress or local government Congress. That's where they are missing the point. That you, do, that you did not organize election at the world level to have executives of that level does not mean you will deny that level their right to elect delegates that will go and represent them in the national convention to elect the leaders of their choice. So that's where they are mixing it up. But I would have to bear with them because most of them are not learned. Most of them are not lawyers. All right. Um, well, reports are saying that the national leadership of your party said they have proof that uh, the national president of the NLC, Joe Agero, and uh, some others have entered into a pact with the APC in order to destabilize the Labour Party and to bolster Joe Agero's political ambitions ahead of 2027. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, I must have to say with absolute, um, absolute uh, sorrow in my heart that um, that executive has been tainted with allegations of forgery. So I would not be surprised if they continue on that lane, forging things. The same Joe Ajero that mobilized people to throw away the faction of a papa in order to save Abure and save the integrity of the Labour Party. It's the same Ajero, the Ajero that they are now trying to label that he is doing what he's doing in order to have political ambition. That is very childish, to say the least. That somebody is telling you to obey your own constitution, obey the constitution of Nigeria, obey the Electoral Act, and then suddenly the person now has ambition. And may I ask respectfully, what is wrong in having ambition? Is it not the overambition of Abure that is trying to destroy the Labour Party? And then he's talking about ambition. Who is really the person having ambition? Joe Ajero is the president of Nigerian Labour Congress. And I know it as a fact that what they are saying is blackmail. You know one thing? Once you start doing things wrong. You start saying things wrong. They are saying all they are saying to cover up their incompetence and corruption in the handling of the Labour Party affairs. Their regime is over. Well, very well said, you know, but like you said, they've been tainted, you know, with allegations of corruption. So I'm wondering, will there be an investigation into all those allegations? And can we expect that if those allegations are proven to be true, they'll be punished even though they are no longer executives of the party? You know, that is why I am so much attracted to Labour Party. You can see how members of the Labour Party are trying to hold their own to account, saying we will not go the way of the other parties. Do you know that there is no chairman or secretary of any other major political party that is governed by officers elected by national convention, as I'm talking to you, whether APC or PDP? And so I'm excited that I have a party that is holding its own to account because we have committed ourselves to be committed to due process and rule of law, to be patriotic, to be altruistic, and to be committed to due process. And so, unfortunately, it is not the duty of the Labour Party to investigate, to arrest, to prosecute, and to convict. It's the duty of the security agencies, and it's the duty of the courts. But as you can see, the people that are the custodian of these documents have been raising alarm publicly about the allegations that they have. All the allegations you are seeing, none of them came from outside Labour Party. All of them came from Labour Party. That is a party that wants to be self, you know, self cleansing at all times. And so I'm very excited. So if they want the documents 
for all these allegations, those people in the custody of it, we produce them. The national treasurer has said it publicly that she has evidence and she's producing the one she has. You can see the former acting national chairman, a woman. You can see the renegade groups. You can see some candidates in the past election. You can see NLC. All these allegations, they have been saying, what is the security agency waiting for before they do their job? I'm so proud of such a party that is willing not to go the way of the formal parties, but to make sure that whoever disobeys the law is brought to justice, no matter who he is, even if he's a member of the Labour Party. I can assure you that it is the security agencies that are dulling in their activities and in their duties. Well, do you foresee a situation where the Labour Party presidential candidate, uh, Peter Obi, might leave the party as it's being insinuated due to this uh, uh, self-cleansing, as you call it, and all the other issues that have engulfed the party, including him being left out of key uh, decisions within the party that he has helped to bolster? You know, the secret things belong to your boss, and only the things he reveals belongs to you. If you meet Pitobi next time, please remember to ask him that question. I know of a fact that he is a man committed to due process and rule of law. He has said it in different fora. So he will never allow himself to compromise the due process in anything that he's done. But you know, when you have a virus or a bacteria eating an organism, if you leave that organism for another one, the same virus and bacteria will try to infect the next organism. So what you do is to apply the right medication to inject that organism to decimate the virus and the bacteria trying to eat it up. That's what we are trying to do in labor now. And by the grace of God, we will be successful. But whatever will happen after that depends on how successful we are in trying to purge Labour Party from the dissidents who have committed themselves to become outlaws rather than obedient to the rule of law. So what he will do will be consequential to all the things we should do. But I think it will be dependent on how the platform he has so chosen adheres to the rule of law and due process. We are all members of the Labour Party today, and we are trying to make the best out of it. But whatever he would do after whatever happens, the Labour Party happens, please, whenever you see him, you ask him. Well, in the meantime, a couple of days back, you know, we interviewed the APC's Kasim Afegwa, who says Peter Obi's inability to resolve the crisis in his party is an indication that he cannot rule over Nigeria and would have made a bad president. Can you react to this, please? <laughs> you know, I'm not used to answering questions from people whose only duty is trying to seek relevance by mentioning the name of P.O. You know, it gives them essential nutrients, so allow them to live in that world. But what I'm going to say is that Kasim Afebua was a candidate or an aspirant to the gubernatorial election of Edo State. And when they finished their first time, they produced three candidates. And the candidate that the person, the governor, they sent to announce was disqualified because of their corruption and incompetence. And the same APC, the chairman that is governing APC is going to face trial from what we read April 17 for his bribery, for the bribery allegation against him. As I'm talking to you now, APC has been the scourge and the worst thing that has happened to any people in Africa. 1,000 companies has gone down in Nigeria within one year. You and I know what the economy is going through. We are paying more now for darkness instead of light. 
and somebody who is consumed with all those things within the political party is still a bit shameless to begin to call PO. You have not talked about all the people that are being kidnapped, killed, women, raped, and you are interested in calling PO, and you're talking about Labour Party. Let me tell you, Labour Party, the worst of Labour Party is still better than the best of APC. And you can quote me on that. They cannot even organize national convention. They cannot even bring out clean people to govern their party or govern Nigeria. What a tragedy. And then he is opening up his mouth, calling P.O. Is P.O. the chairman of Labour Party? P.O. is a man who wants due process. He doesn't sit down to command a chairman to leave or don't leave. He has to go through due process. This is the man, for the moment, this is the man that is introducing what Nigeria needs. Can you imagine? <laughs> Does it not surprise you that a man who is in the opposition, who is not making policies for Nigeria, is attracting more attention from all these loquacious human beings who do not have any other job except calling his name just to attract traffic? He's not the president. He is not making policies. So why are they calling on him? That is also a matter of their incompetence and joblessness and nothing to do, nothing to doism in their body, you know, busy bodies. Well, on that note, uh, we'd like to thank you for coming to join us for this discussion. Uh, Kenneth Okonkwo, Labour Party Chieftain, thanks for joining us.